Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto has all Uzumaki Chakra and Rinnegan in Fairy Tale. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by AIDEN0621 and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. It had been two years since the end of the fourth shinobi world war and. And there had been relative peace throughout the nations, it was only disturbed by the odd bandit and missing nin who were dissatisfied by the status quo. Naruto had been training during these years trying to master his new. Pound ability to use the wood release. These two years had been great for his ability to use the sod after nature release, during the times when he was recovering his chakra, he spent his time studying the materials that Aruka and Kakashi gave him at the end of the war, so he could finally become a Jounin and be one step closer to his dream of being the Hokage. Naruto had just met with Sasuke interrupting his journey of atonement in order to have a friendly spar to test the limits of not only his new arm, but also his newly obtained nature release, hey Sasuke, you up for a spar? And Moret turned and looked at him with a quirked eyebrow, why? Because I'm bored and want to test some new techniques, the blonde answered him. Rolling his eyes, Sasuke agreed, fine loser. The two rivals stood up from their seated position, the blonde Jinchuriki observed, as the Achiha shrugged off his cloak with his lone arm. I'll start this off Naruto commented, would release. Tree limb technique. Five tree limbs burst from the ground and lashed out at Sasuke, who promptly jumped away on instinct, landing a few feet away, struggling to hold back his surprised face, so this is what you've been up to. Since when? Naruto smirked in satisfaction, how'd you like my new jutsu? Disgruntled Sasuke responds with no wonder you were eager for a spar, however. Suddenly the ground around them exploded in a circle of black flames, causing the branches to burn into ashes, not good enough. Alright then would release great forest technique the whiskered teen called out. Once more Sasuke jumped out of the way of the wooden branches that sprouted out of the arms of the Uzumaki, your jutsu is slow, I can see it coming. You got a long way to go before you can even think of using it in combat. Yeah, that's why I wanted to test it in a spar with you. Naruto admitted a bit deflated, but enough of that, time to let loose. Let's go Kurama. Sasuke smirked, now this is what I'm talking about. And the two old friends dashed at each other. The superior speed of Naruto was met by Sasuke's superior agility, in a back and forth flurry of kicks and punches, neither being able to take the upper hand or land a punch against the other. The two danced like a duo of ballerinas who had practiced this particular sonnet for decades, meeting each other's strikes, it was one of the few times Naruto could let loose. Having almost no other people who could challenge him in a fight, sparring Sasuke was a complete breath of fresh air. An afternoon of sparring later, and the two friends sat next to each other contemplating the sunset. Hey Naruto, Sasuke broke the silence, what do you think, if we left for somewhere else? It makes sense, replies Naruto, I don't like it, I still want to be Hokage, but when the villages have us hanging over them like a damical sword, then true peace could never be achieved. I just don't if I can do it though. I spent so long seeking vengeance, so long chasing violence I don't know if I can last in this peace, I feel twitchy, Sasuke admits, I need a challenge, something to do. I can't find that here. I understand that but still leaving everything behind, that's not something I can just do. Says Naruto let me talk to Kurama first. Naruto a voice called from within the deep recess of his mind, and Naruto found himself within the seal, where Kurama said. As much as I want to believe in what you've helped build staying here is a risk for me, and I can't guarantee that after you die I won't be sealed again. If you want to leave I support you. And I guess we have a plan, I'll see you later Kurama. Responded Naruto as he woke up. So, what's your answer? Naruto heard Sasuke ask as he came to. So how are we doing this? I thought your Rinnegan ability was to use an advanced version of the replacement technique. Wasn't it called Amenatejikara? Asked Naruto. Yes, but, before we go. I can't guarantee you we'll end up in the same place. Sasuke stated neutrally as a portal opened up in front of them, goodbye Naruto. Sasuke walked into the portal, leaving Naruto to stand alone in the clearing, forcing him to make a choice then and there. Gulping, the blonde Jinchuriki took a step into the portal his friend had just entered. He came out on the other side and all around him was forest, so he decided to to try and determine where he would find the closest city, when he didn't sense anything he decided to enter sage mode and found two large signatures of some energy he wasn't familiar with but was very similar in nature to natural energy. So he made his way over to them in hopes of asking them where the nearest large settlement was so he could learn about this new dimension he inhabited. On his way to the two large sources of energy he passed by many people who looked to be desolate and void of all hope of receiving aid, at that moment, he felt vindicated in his choice to leave the elemental nations behind without a second thought. Walking up to one of the passing vagrants who seemed injured he asked. Would you like me to heal you? 
The vagrant nods his head in acceptance and says damn dragons got our town good, I got burnt getting my dog out of the house. Dragons? Naruto asks stupefied, I'm sorry, I'm a foreigner. Must be pretty fucking foreign then. The old man grumbled under his breath, there's no warning to them dragons coming. One day you living out your life in peaceful retirement, then the next them damn lizards show up and all you knew is gone. Sigh, if only there was something we could do. I'm so sorry that happened. Could you perhaps tell me which country this is? Asked Naruto. We are in Dragnif young lad, must be really far away if you don't know where we are. The old man commented. Yeah, something like that. The blonde chuckled back while scratching the back of his head in an embarrassed way. Anyway thanks for the help old man sorry I can't do more for you guys, but I have to get going. He waved over his shoulder as he ran off towards the east. As he got closer to the two odd signatures he learned that one was somewhat different than the other, similar to how the toads felt compared to his fellow ninja, so he assumed it was a non-human training one like the toads did with him. A dragon. He thought to himself confused as all the dragons he had seen depicted were long-bodied serpent-esque beings that had small wings. Yet, as he approached the location of the two signatures, he could clearly see the gargantuan creature from his position. He approached closer, sticking to the canopy of a tree, where he could see the second source was a woman, however, before he could do more, a voice stunned him, are you going to continue hiding little mouse? He left the cover and said sorry for lurking, but I was surprised I've never seen a dragon in person before, a real dragon, I mean. Apologizing to the monolithic beast the closest facsimile I've seen was nowhere near awe-inspiring as you, and it was a pretty intense thing. He said chuckling to himself. Are you two just going to ignore me, and irate Reed shouted at the two beings conversing. What are you doing here blondie? Huh? For a moment Naruto forgot himself as he stared at the Reed idly reminiscent of his mother. You look familiar. Karen how did you get here? He asked squinting at her. Wait, your chest is too big, sorry about that. He said laughing to himself. The Reed blushed scarlet who do you think you are you ruffian, saying such a thing to I she sniffed disdainfully at the whiskered teen. She pointed her staff at the blonde and shot a beam of energy at him. Wood style. Wood locking wall, wood release. Binding nest. As he finished his techniques a wooden dome grew around him as a tree sprouted up and bound the unnamed woman. What the hell lady. I didn't do anything wrong. You commented on the size of my breasts and for that you must perish. The feisty woman said. The dragon on the other hand was just sitting there rather amused by this whole showcase. Now now Irene, calm down. The dragon attempted to placate, only knowing all too well it would only serve to fuel the fire. This young man must be here for a reason, right young man? He asked Naruto. Of course, I came to ask for directions to the nearest large city or town, I'm kind of lost though that two of the stronger things I could sense might know. Responded the blonde. The red-haired woman and the dragon looked at him incredulously as this guy serious. Boy what's with the looks? Did I do something wrong? He asked rather defensively. I just figured two strong beings such as yourselves would most likely belong to that place's military and point me in the right direction. Offended she responded I'm not some mere soldier, I am the queen of this country, you should show me the proper respect owing to my station. Queen. So that's how things run here Naruto thought to himself momentarily before smirking, you mean an ass kicking. That's what I always do to the nobility I've come across in my career, hell, I gut punched my dad and he was a king. Naruto replied to the haughty woman. Do you think you can talk to me like that? She said, as she enchanted the air around her to send multiple blades of wind at the blonde. Earth style. Earth wall. The blonde countered her attack, wood style. Advent of a world of flowering trees. As trees sprouted up all around the reed deed they released a pollen that renders the people who inhale it unconscious. To counter this the young woman once more enchanted the air around her expelled it. But she was still briefly caught and felt drowsy. To counter his attack she enchanted the ground around him and the ground erupted around him and trapped him in massive barrier of earth. Looks like I'll have to use my strongest wood style attack, Naruto thought to himself. Wood style. Wood dragon technique. He shouted as a massive dragon made of wood burst through ground and out of his imprisonment and entangled the woman and the dragon, binding them together. Are you going to introduce yourselves now or should I keep going? He said to the pair. In response she replied Irene and I will be your end. Seema intoned Irene not long after that he saw a meteorite descend from above. Not again. I thought only Madara and Sasu could do this. Whined the blonde boy. Alright Karama I'm gonna need a hand with this. He said to the grumpy fox. Alright brat let's do this. Karama replied. Ajudama. The two shouted out in unison. The black and purple orb slowly shrunk as Karama used his ability as the nine tails to super compress the attack, granting it even more power than usual. The ball and meteorite met and the orb exploded ravaging the meteor and leaving only small chunks to rain down upon the trio wood style. Wood dome. 
a whiskered teen called out, shielding them from the debris. So about the location of that city or town. He says to two stunned beings. Of course replied Irene. Chapter 2. It had been two months since his encounter with the future Queen of Dragnif, and Naruto had been hard at work learning and recreating the game's techniques of the Shadai Hokage, which was currently easier said than done. Poof. Damn it, another failure, the blonde hissed as he looked at the giant hunk of wood. It had a humanoid shape, but what was supposed to be the face was totally blank and smooth, its left arm was a twig about 3 cm in diameter and 8 cm in length, and the other was an oversized branch with a diameter of 12 cm and a length of 36 cm. Nothing that resembled any human limbs in actuality, and the less said about the body and other set of limbs the best, all in all, Naruto doubted he would have success in the jutsu any time soon. Around the clearing, his shadow clones proved to have done little progress as well, each one having summoned a hunk of wood, looking to be in worse condition than his. Frustrated, the blonde dispersed his clones, closing his eyes in preparation for the mental backlash he was bound to receive, after a minute of shifting through the memories of the clones and nursing a headache, he was finally able to draw one conclusion. Damn, there must be something I can do. Naruto yelled out loud, picking up a scroll he had tossed to the side earlier in the morning, I'm doing all the steps right. What am I missing? Pausing for a moment Naruto decided to sit down and relaxed, remember what Kakashi-sensei and Ruka taught you. Ah, still not getting that damn jutsu brat. The Kyubi's voice mocked him from within the recess of his mind. The blonde frowned, shouting back shut up Kurama, let me concentrate. And fell back into a familiar breathing pattern. As his breath evened out, he felt the tiniest of hints of chakra originating from one of the scrolls in his pouch. Opening his eyes, he reached for the school. It was the one that explained the basics of Mokuten, how it was a combination of earth and water yada yada, but inspecting it further, Naruto noticed something he hadn't noticed before, perhaps because he didn't rely much on the scrolls before having had Yamato's assistant. The Senju symbol at the bottom of the scroll had traces of chakra still left within it. Curiosity got the better of him, and he inserted his chakra as he would any other storage seal, and a book popped out. Mokuten for dummies. Naruto Fasipum did such an obvious name, the book just had to be made for him. There simply wasn't a way it wasn't. He met the Shadai in the war, and from Tabarama's comment he and Lord First had been pretty equal as far as goofballs. Sighing, nevertheless he opened the oil and began reading it. Though I haven't had successes in passing Mokuten on to my children, I'm writing this in hopes one of my descendants in the future will have a chance of awakening the wood style as I have. Well the basic wood style can be accomplished simply by mixing earth and water nature chakra, higher level techniques such as my wood dragon, the golem and even my true several thousand hands, require a strong life force, and most of all, require the will of fire. As well as a deeper understanding into the nature of the forest, my training in sage mode helped me achieve this. It is important to remember that to achieve true wood style techniques, one must be spiritually connected to the nature of the trees, understand it as a master of fire techniques would know fire, or a master of wind would know wind. As Mokuten isn't just a combination of two natures, but its own form of life creating jutsu. Naruto was so engrossed with his guide that he didn't even notice Irene walk up to him, only until she kicked his shoulder and screamed wake up. Wah. Zetsu clones. Where? The Uzumaki yelled in surprise as he jumped into a high guard position, causing the red-haired woman to fall on her butt. Damn it, watch where you jump. Irene yelled, annoyance dripping into her voice, you damn idiot. Hey, you're the lady from the other day. Irene right. What do you want? The whiskered blonde asked. I'm looking for people, dragons have crossed the continent. War is coming to our land, we desperately need strong people. The woman stated neutrally, having risen to her feet and returned to the posturing of a queen. So, you need me? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow, against dragons. Fuck it, why not? But. Wait, you'll help us. The queen to be asked incredulously. The lecherous grin spread across the lips of the Jinchuriki, as he did his best impersonation of his former master, why not, a beautiful and bountiful woman such as yourself asking for help. How could I refuse? Irene's cheek turned a bright red as she looked at him in embarrassment, before his words registered, causing the embarrassment to turn into anger. Damn you. A shiver ran through Naruto's back as he suddenly felt the urge to run, but he was too late as a fist connected into his face, which was somehow stronger than the friendly love taps his former teammate Sakura used to give him. Damn she hits harder than Sakura. The blonde thought to himself as he flew through the air, a river of tears falling from his eyes as the air under him was quickly replaced with forest dirt. From above, a dragon chuckled as he witnessed his pupil drag a bound, bloody and bruised whiskered blonde across the forest back to the castle the young maiden currently took residence in, seems Irene did not need my help after all. From below, Irene muttered to herself, idiots never learn. 
as she dragged her prize back to her husband, hoping to at least get something other than an indifferent glance. It was half an hour later when Irene finally arrived at the castle with her blonde friend, Reed Captive, and brought him to her husband, in hopes of finally earning some form of praise from the paranoid man that was her betrothed. I have found the man who was able to bind not only me but also Balsirian and have brought him here so he can help us with the encroaching threat from the dragons. She told him. Rung responded by saying, if he has so much strength we should just put him down while we have the chance so he doesn't become a threat later. Confused, Irene defended Naruto, why would we do that? He has agreed to fight the dragon scourge with Sari as the one who's being talked about here, I feel I should just add I'm only here because I'm bored and thought fighting the dragons might be fun. The blonde in question interrupted. Why must you interrupt us during a conversation with your filthy commoner voice? Rung asked in a quiet yet heated voice. Naruto looked at the king for all of two seconds before he broke out in fits of laughter, doubling over and wiping away comedic tears, me, a commoner, ha 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 ha. Finished laughing, Naruto continued, I'm technically a quarter god not sure how common that is around here. He deadpanned at his new friend's spouse. Ha ah, part god you say. Preposterous there's no such thing the king said and used at the audacity of the peasant in front of him. Would you like a demonstration? Naruto asked cheekily, crossing his arms and attempted to suppress the grin trying to emerge in his face. If you have an area you don't mind being temporarily destroyed then I'll show you. As the trio walked onto a massive plane the king said this should suffice no. He smirked, there's no way he'll be strong enough to even make a significant amount of damage to this area, thought the arrogant ex-military general. Naruto smiled back at him, this is perfect. Wood style. True several thousand hands. A massive thousand-handed Buddha roughly the size of a Gamabunta burst through the ground and shook the two onlookers, after it finished emerging Naruto jumped off its head and looked at them, impressed yet. He asked as he suddenly burst into a gold flame-like cloak. If not you will after this. Entering six paths age mode, he used the truth-seeking balls and scooping the duo up into the air and a kilometer away. Tailed beast ras and shuriken. He shouted as he threw the attack, when it landed it expanded and engulfed the Buddha statue, and then some as it exploded eviscerating the wood-style technique. He turned to the observers with a huge smile on his face as he scratched the back of his head, how was that? He asked. Irene stared dumbfounded by his strength. He's kind of cute, kind of like the ugly puppy you can't help but not hate she thought to herself, though his attitude could be better, much too loud she continued in her head. Though terrified the king responded, so what? Irene could do something similar with her strongest attack. He declared haughtily. Naruto answered, that's only like my 14th strongest attack, doesn't even crack my top 10, maybe even top 20 if I really pushed it. Irene turned to her husband, can you see now? I told you he would be useful against the dragons, look what he just did, and despite your earlier words, I would be hard pressed to match anything much stronger than that. The king relented. Fine, you were correct I suppose, but next time you will do as I say. He told her, expecting her to agree like usual when she wants his approval. Of course dear husband, but just remember your place, I am the monarch and you the consort, you only have the power I allow you, tread lightly. She growled at him at a volume she assumed Naruto could not hear her at. Naruto however could hear her and had a minor frown on his face, he thought people married because they loved each other, but all Kurama could feel from the two was negative emotions like jealousy, fear and lust from the king, and contempt, anger, and a sort of wistfulness from Irene. Hours of being locked in his room cough prison cough finally came to an end when a scowling Irene finally appeared through the door, get your things blondie, you'll be coming with me to the front lines. You'll be badly needed there. Wait, what's going on? The blonde asked, not even needing Kurama to feel the whirlwind of negative emotions rolling up out of the red-haired woman. Nothing, now let's get going. The queen of Dragnaf snapped, leaving the room with a marching stomp on her way out. Fuck Shikamaru was right, women are troublesome, the blonde said out loud as he followed her out of the room. But damn she's hot. Irene led them, a platoon of the strongest men in the kingdom. She looked forward as she rode her majestic white mirror, a stoic expression running across her face. Behind her, her husband and king consort, General Rung carried the kingdom's banner, also saddled up on a horse, his face settled somewhere in between a scowl and attempting to remain stoic. The platoon of 30 of the strongest warriors marched forward to where the sighting of dragons had been reported, as they rode on, they passed many lines of refugees, all hoping to flee the catastrophe. Third from rank was Naruto Uzumaki, being an irregular under the direct control and command of Queen Irene. Though not one of the soldiers behind him, he shared their feelings. As the unit came to a halt, Naruto standing next to the Queen of Dragnif, he commented with a sorrowful expression on his face, Lord First One said no matter the era, there's always conflict, looks like he was right. Lord first. The queen asked with a quirked eyebrow. 
Ashurama Senju, he was the first king of the Hidden Leaf, having united the clans of the Land of Fire after hundreds of years of civil war. He was a wise man and the first person to use the wood style since the times of the sage. Naruto said, smiling. Irene and Rung looked at him then why not just call him king? The crown general asked, some weird costumes from your land foreigner? Naruto didn't miss the look of the man's eye and answered proudly, yes, he was the first, he laid the foundation for our nation. He was the first will of fire and he was the first Hokage. Likewise, his brother succeeded him, so we referred his brother as Lord Second, then Old Man Siratobi, my father, Granny Tsunade and Kakashi Sensei, after each succession takes the upper title along those lines, from third, fourth, fifth and sixth Hokage. Irene noticed something in that moment, the earlier tension was gone, the trepidation and hesitance from her warriors on the prospect of facing dragons was gone. Forgotten in favor of curiosity by the unknown outlander, though, she could still clearly see the clear look of discontent on some of her lord's faces, as the prospect a stranger would by riding third from rank, instead of the back of the line. To distract herself from this fact and the uncomfortable feeling tying up in her stomach, Irene asked, what do you mean by hokage? Oh, I guess that's not exactly a term known here is it? Naruto asked sheepishly, bringing a hand to the back of his head as his cheeks took on an embarrassed red hue, well, Hokage means fire shadow, and the best way I can explain it is that the Hokage is a warrior king. When a Hokage is crowned, they take up an oath to defend the hidden leaf and the land of fire, no matter the cost. Even at the cost of family? One of Irene's commanders asked. Naruto turned his head to look at the rugged man for a second and shook his head, no, you see, it's our culture to see our home as the people, not the land we occupy. You could hate a leaf shinobi, but if the situation called for it, you would be willing to sacrifice yourself for that person. Loyalty to our people comes first, everything else is second. It's what drives the will of fire. Sounds like a wonderful place. The queen commented with the slightest of smiles, I'd quite like to visit one day. Eyes forward. The king called out growing tired of hearing the stranger. One of the scouts appeared from the tree line, everyone could clearly see how shaken he was. Suddenly, fear returned to the 30-men platoon, with some of the lesser warriors beginning to second-guess themselves. Report. The king called out dismounting his horse, followed by Irene dismounting hers. Sir, the dragons the scout was interrupted by the roar echoing over the mountain valley. Suddenly, the sky darkened as a small swarm of wyvern approached like a cloud. One of the men started chuckling, which led to others to follow and suit my lady, is this the great threat? Wyvern? Suddenly, as Irene was about to reply, a much more terrifying roar echoed through the mountains, as two dragons, roughly the size of a small mountain, appeared over the horizon. You just had to jinx it. A lord yet unknown to Irene complained, hitting the man from before in his helm. Of the two dragons, the one on the right had red scales with an orange underbelly which Naruto couldn't help but say, that dragon's got style. The other was a mix of alternating navy and cyan blue in a camo pattern that was accented by white streaks and underbelly. Irene, those are dragons. Rung commented to his wife we must retreat, we can't hope to fight two dragons and a swarm wyvern at the same time. Something is coming. Naruto hissed, and no sooner he spoke, a black dragon with yellow streaks all over his body appeared from clouds, if the blonde had a guess, it would be about the size of the Jayuki. Three dragons. Irene whispered somewhat loudly, only to be roughly pulled by her husband. Irene, we have to go, now. No, if we let ourselves be defeated this easily we stand no hope the queen yelled back. Rung looked at her, scowling, and if we stay, we will die. We will die regardless, Naruto interrupted, his voice having taken a growl-like tone will you die like a coward on your knees. The king took a step back, shut up you damn commoner, not even your so-called godly powers can hope to take on three dragons. If you are so afraid, go home Rung. But we will stay here and fight. Irene stated with conviction as the wind picked up and the dragons got closer. Fine, die then. Men, retreat. The king ordered, some eagerly followed him as he mounted his horse, quickly following and stepped behind him. A few remained, too few of them. Like queen, we are ready to die if necessary to stop these overgrown lizards from ravaging our lands. One of her subjects started with a short bow. There's no need, Viscount Hartfree, retreat, if I die here. Rung will not take the throne, Irene ordered, stunning her subjects. Naruto on the other hand waited as the few remaining knights made some distance, you know they aren't going to obey that order. They are loyal to you. Irene scowled and stated frankly, I know, but my worthless husband does not deserve to take the kingdom in my stead, should we fail. He's an ignorant coward, and I've no idea why my parents insisted on me marrying that worthless lime. You have a weird culture you know. Arranged marriages are near unheard of in the elemental nations. The blonde said in an attempt to cheer her up. Now is not the time blondie. The red-haired woman scowl lessened despite her words. 
She bore witness as Naruto's body was engulfed in gold flames, somewhat similar to the same mode he had used a day prior to destroy that field. What is your plan Blondie? Irene asked, having an uneasy feeling. You and your men can take on these wyvern, but that black dragon is still a problem. The blonde admitted, I got a technique that will deal with him. But I will only be able to use it once, and it will take some time to prepare. Meanwhile, could you be a doll and help me distract the two other lizards? Irene rolled her eyes at his playfulness, but Naruto's face shifted into seriousness not soon after and made a familiar hand sign shadow clone technique. Four clones of the blonde appeared next to him in puffs, all in sage mode. The original turned to the queen and requested make sure this clone is undisturbed. No sooner he said the word, one of the clones sat down, the aura of a fox appeared around him, causing Irene to look at him questioningly, to which he replied I'll explain later. As two clones plus one original took to the skies all clad in sage mode. Naruto raised his right hand, from the back Kurama's chakra appeared to form extra arms as he formed a Rasen shuriken. Alright, number two, you distract blue, orange dragon is mine. Number three, keep the big black off of us until it's time. With his orders given, the original let loose a Rasen shuriken towards the black dragon, the howling screech of the technique, catching the eye of the beast who tried to dodge it, but being too big and too slow, hitting the top right leg. Okay, Rasen shuriken, not that effective, looks like I was right. Naruto told himself with a smirk, relishing in the feel of an opponent who he could go all out with. He flew towards the orange dragon, having to swiftly evade the black dragon who had come barreling at him when his Bijuu Sage Mode clone had sent his way. The red orange dragon was about to fire a stream of red flames when its mouth was clamped shut by the fist of the golden avatar of a nine-tailed fox who seemed to hover suspended in the air as the uppercut sent the creature onto its back. Though it did manage to fire one powerful fireball which Naruto was sure had it been a clone, it would have been popped due to the concussive power of the explosion when it got near him. Alright you ugly bastard. That's how you want to play huh? The Jinchuriki told himself as a golden avatar encircled him, you're up Kurama. The nine-tailed fox grinned viciously at the thought of fighting a creature of a similar power to his siblings, he responded to his partner my pleasure. As the avatar of the nine-tailed fox chased after the falling dragon, blue and purple chakra began to form a purple ball in the beast's mouth. As they got closer, Kurama compressed the ball and aimed it at where the neck of the dragon would be, before pulling up hard awaiting the explosion that would come. And sure enough, the explosion rose in a white dome, which forced the blonde teen to cover his eyes. Upon opening them again, he was hit with a powerful yellow lightning, which caused his body to seize and lock, sending him plummeting towards the ground. Shit, Kurama. Naruto yelled inside his mind. Shut up brat. The beast yelled back as the body hit the ground with a loud thud. Standing up from the ground, wiping away the dirt and blood grime from his face, the blonde Jinchuriki looked at the crater around him and groaned, fuck that hurt. Entering his prized sage mode again, Naruto sensed that one of the dragons was down for the count. Well, at least that's one bastard down. But we need to get in position, it's almost time. From within his mind the Kaiubi looked at the big black dragon, commenting Naruto if this doesn't get him, you won't be able to move because of the strain. No, I have one more option Naruto said stubbornly. Brat, spending so much chakra at once will strain your body. Kaiubi growled. Naruto brushed away the beast's concerns by saying, well, I hope to fall in the lap of a beautiful queen then. Brat, if you get killed because of your infatuation with a married queen I'm not gonna be at your funeral, Kurama commented teasingly with a snort. Yeah yeah, you'll be too busy missing me. Naruto waved off, taking flight once more and positioning himself between the dragon and Irene, who was preparing to launch off another attack at his clone. The clone and the avatar popped at the two other clones he had summoned earlier and hadn't popped yet returned to his side as all three summoned their Kyubi avatar as a massive chakra rushed to join back with its user as the air saturated itself with this life-giving energy. And the three avatars glowed. From the ground, Irene witnessed the weird fox avatar that surrounded her warriors merge to become a three-headed monstrosity with six arms. Two ones, a gold and purple one originated from the arms of the beast as they became encased in highly compressed and fast-spinning blades of wind that let off a horrid screeching. And Naruto launched the two missiles at the black dragon, as the techniques exploded the ground shook violently, she fell on her butt. Yet she could see the black creature be torn to shreds by the powerful technique. Not before it released its last act of defiance, which hit the disintegrating body of the three-headed beast and squared on Naruto, who was sent back rocketing towards the dirt below, but not before the last remaining dragon tail whipped him into Irene's direction. Irene tried to catch him, but the body of the blonde hit the dirt digging up a trail of dirt behind him. She, despite what she told herself, ran towards him, who still was surprisingly conscious, if disoriented, and cradled his head in her lap. His eyes seemed to gain some momentary focus as he asked her, are you an angel? 
Despite what Irene told herself, she blushed lightly, but she hushed him that was a nasty fall. Rest now. Despite what Irene told herself, she indeed enjoyed having the stranger's head snuggle up in her lap. Even if she would deny it to anyone else. It was a sign of trust between the two of them. One that could not become publicly known due to his being a foreigner and her the queen. This gesture held no romantic subtext and was born purely out of simple affection of someone who would treat her like a person and had nothing to gain by kissing up to her, yet they could never tell anyone about the blossoming friendship. Irene was married, even if not by her own choice, and the sovereign of Dragnef therefore it would be unbecoming of her to be seen in the company of male not of her family or husband unattended. He was a foreigner, an unknown stranger to these lands, yet he was the best of her army, the strongest she could field in these times of peril, who was looking to become her most trusted warrior. Naruto had been passed out for 15 minutes when Zara saw the position him and the queen had been in, he'd been passing by to meet with the king about the construction of the eclipse gate him and Anna had been building, the meeting was to ask about the possibility of allocating resources to the project. Worried about what might befall the kingdom should the queen commit adultery he told the king. Lord Rung, I have come to speak with you regarding the eclipse gate and receiving some resources. Rung replied, of course the kingdom will give as much aid as possible to deal with the dragon scourge. Yes the weapon will be a massive boon to the war. On another note I feel I should mention that I saw the queen with a strange blonde in her lap. He relayed the information to the man who as far as he knew was a good and loyal husband. Of course, thank you for telling me this, I'll have them discreetly tailed to make sure nothing untoward happens. The king responded to the mage who would help him win the war and usurp whatever power his wife had left with those in high positions of the government. This is perfect, with this I can finally take over the kingdom and not be labeled a tyrant who overthrew the beloved queen he thought to himself. While all this was happening Naruto woke up but didn't move, the spot where his head laid was extremely plush, so he laid there until he heard I know you are awake, you may remove your head now. She scolded him. Naruto replied cheekily, but your luscious thighs made such a nice resting place, but if you insist on it your prettiness. These comments made the redeed flush a similar color as her hair. You can't say things like that to a married woman. She said to her newest asset and guilty crush. Grinning cockily, Naruto responded. After the stunt he pulled on the battlefield your free game to tease. Irene sighed disappointed, I wish he meant free to pursue, but instead of saying that she decided to ask a question. Why did that technique you used knock you out? I sensed that you had plenty of magic left. Asked Irene. The blonde rubbed the back of his nervously. The technique I used is quite draining, and it also stresses body, the more this technique is used the easier it becomes, but because I have only used it once before leaving it alone for two years the backlash was quite substantial. However because this is my strongest transformation not much calls for its use, but I wanted to prove myself valuable and willing to help for your husband, so I can continue to help you. Her cheeks pinked and she coughed, cough, well I suppose I owe you thanks. Naruto waved it off easily, nonsense, what are friends for? She blushed one final time before rushing out the room. Would she leave like that? Women are so weird. Another month passed, and with it a string of battles both victories and losses. Currently, in a dark and stony room, Irene and Rung stood over a map. A scowl deep on both of the monarch's faces. You're putting too much faith on an outlander. Rung yelled, what guarantee do you have that he won't take over the kingdom and kill us all? Irene replied fiercely, and you won't. I know my warrior better than you. Ha. Ah, your warrior Irene. Sounds to me like you're admitting to having committed adultery. The king said with a predatory smirk. Yes of course you would know all about adultery, consort. Irene replied coldly, the various warriors, lords and mages around the room shifted uncomfortably. My lady, my lord, it's clear you both are having trouble, perhaps it's best that we adjourn come back to this another time. Lord Obald stated, making quick time for the exit of the room. Soon, everyone else left the room. Rung walked up to Irene two inches from her face and was about to grab her when Naruto intercepted him, crushing his wrist in a tight grip. The man was horrified as he met blood-red feral eyes as the blonde growled, hurt her, and I'll kill you, king or not. Rung began to break under the pressure he felt coming off of the blonde. Letting the king of Dragnef go, Naruto watched him as he scampered away from the room before he turned to the sole occupant remaining. Irene stood there with empty eyes and his heart stung when he watched tears begin to fall from her eyes. I can't believe that my own kingdom is falling apart. Irene said as she broke down into sobs. Naruto embraced her in a hug, they don't deserve you. I've watched you fight for them, and in return they give you nothing but scorn. But you'll always have me by your side, my loyalties lie solely with you, and nowhere else, nor with anyone else. To Irene's distraught ears, this was all but a declaration of love, and she did the one thing she had been accused of earlier by her own husband. With a tender hand she pulled the blind Jinchuriki down to meet her lips. 
Naruto was surprised, but dealing with a moody Irene was always unpredictable. So he wisely chose to shut up and kiss her back, after all, it only meant more lap naps, and despite what he would tell everyone else, he did indeed have romantic feelings for the red-haired woman in his arms. Naruto. Irene called out to get his attention. Said blonde turned to look at his queen, yeah. Taking a deep breath, Irene took his hand in hers and clasped it between her palms, bringing it to rest just between her neck and bosom as she confessed, I have been pondering something and have decided, through this whole nightmare with my husband and kingdom, you've been the biggest supporter I have, the strongest man of my army. The sole reason we've done as well as we have in this war. You've helped me when everyone else turned their backs on me, and above all, you've given me your love. Naruto felt a portion of his chakra slowly draining, curious about this, he questioned her, what are you doing Irene? I must reward you my love. The word came difficult to Irene, who had never truly experienced these emotions in life, it's a surprise, but one that will bring joy to our world. Irene then leaned in and whispered in his ear my king. With a loving kiss, she stood up and left. Leaving a dumbfounded Naruto, who asked, do you know what just happened? Hirama deceptively nodded as he said, not a damn clue. One month had passed since Irene had taken some of Naruto's chakra, and the two were in a clearing, the blonde had made a few shadow clones for the queen, to practice the new magic she and Balsirian had been working on. His new F-R-I-E-N-D. That called it dragon slaying magic it was supposed to allow more people to match or overcome the dragons when on the field, the redeed had brought in one of the kingdom's foremost healers named Acnologia, who would ensure there weren't any overtly negative side effects, as a result of learning the magic, in return to being allowed to become a dragon slayer himself. How are things going so far? Naruto questioned, he had just woken up from a nap and saw Irene still practicing. Irene smiled lightly seeing the man she was coming to love. It seems to be progressing well, only another week or two before it will be ready to be taught by the dragons we have supporting us. Naruto smiled brightly at that as Irene had been working extremely hard, so he ran up to her from his spot under a tree and hugged her. I'm so glad, why don't we give it a real test? The blonde asked her while grinning, he definitely felt something for but couldn't place, it was somewhat similar to what he had felt for Sakura once upon a time, but these feelings were much more intense than what he had felt for his former teammate. She smirked in response, if you think you can take it, then let us begin the testing. Naruto jumped back immediately, clasping his hands together as he called out the technique, wood style. Wood expulsion technique. A giant dragon's face made of wood that was split down the middle swallowed him and closed. Muffled by the technique he called out, this technique was the ultimate defense of Lord First, nothing you do should be able to break this. Hearing what she interpreted to be a taunt she decided to use on or her stronger dragon slaying spells, Sage Dragon's Roar. As the massive beam of Ethernano struck the wooden construct with all the force of an abyss break spell, it completely destroyed the face on the technique, but it couldn't break through it. As the box opened up the blonde teen was sweating lightly and had a nervous smile on his face as he rubbed the back of his head. That was really close Irene. I'm so proud of you, that attack was stronger than most of the attacks Kurama could make save his tailed beast ball. Naruto then went and helped the exhausted Irene to her feet where she pecked him on the lips and whispered, there's more of this later. While this was going on the spy the king assigned who had no magic so Naruto couldn't sense him was looking on and knew this was the kind of thing the king needed to depose Irene from the throne. My lord, I've come bearing news. The spy stated, kneeling before the monarch and bowing his head low. Rung, emboldened by Irene's ever-extending absence, sat on the queen's throne and looked down upon his favored spy, asking what have you found out about Irene's outings. It's as you thought my lord, the soy confessed, I have witnessed her majesty commit an act of adultery with the outlander, it seems they have been in a relationship for quite some time. Anyone else would have forgiven the lowly spy for thinking the king consort of Dragnuff would have been angry, devastated, or heartbroken at hearing the news that his wife had indeed cheated on him. But instead, Rung smiled, there was satisfaction in his eyes. The king inclined his head to ask another question, what exactly did you catch her doing? They kissed, often. Doesn't seem to go beyond kissing. I would say their relationship is young, perhaps a few weeks to a month at most. The spy replied with the information he had been gathering ever since coming into service of the king. Almost jolly, the former general stood up and stuck his hand out to the spy, offering him aid to stand up, it seems our friend, the mage Zeref was right to come to me with his concerns, go to my steward, and he will reward you well. I have other matters to attend to. Watching the door to the hall close behind the spy, Rung said to himself, finally, Dragnif will be mine, and I can depose Irene no, I'll make her suffer, suffer through the humiliation she's caused me. I'll hurt her like she hurt me, but the blonde menace must go. I'll show him, I'll make Irene regret betraying me for an outlander, and he will forever regret attempting to steal what's rightfully mine. Hmm, perhaps, someone. Get that black mage Zeref, I got an offer for him. 
the courier bowed before the man and scurried away from the throne room, leaving the former general, now king to sit once more on a throne that didn't belong to him yet. As he told himself, soon, the kingdom will be mine, as it was rightfully meant to be from the start. Damned woman. My lord. A sultry voice called from the door leading to the stairwell, I hope you aren't planning to keep me waiting and lonely all day. There stood a brown-haired woman with her hair tied back into a long braid, fair skin, and a freckled face. No, my dear, let me show you what a real man is like. The king said with a lecherous smile on his face. A week had passed since Naruto had let Irene use his ultimate defense as a test dummy, and the two were out training which was in reality an excuse to go on a date. The date consisted of a picnic under a big willow tree, in which they could hide from prying eyes, Irene had her laid against Naruto's chest, as he fed some pieces of fruit to her he kissed her on the cheek, you know I don't think I've ever been this happy. The blonde told her. Irene turned to him and asked, this is definitely in my top three favorite moments of my life. She responded. Curious she decided to ask him a question, can you tell me about your past? Naruto pondered for a second before answering, well I come from a place called the village hidden in the leaves, but it wasn't really a village more of a metropolis, and it was one of two major powers in our country, we were technically the military sect. Of the country and most children were raised to be warriors, and funnily enough despite my strength I'm still technically the lowest rank you can be anyway, when you first graduate between the age of 5 and 12, the missions you go on are quite dull. The ones my team and I got the most frequently was the one to retrieve a missing cat was stupidly fast and nimble, and walking the dogs that belong to a clan that specialize in using them for combat so oh, these dogs are ridiculously strong, and one time the dog I had to walk dragged me into a minefield and boy that was unpleasant, but the worst mission we had was for sure the one where we had to capture the village's combat ostrich, that thing kicked our ass for a whole week. Anyway that's all I can really say, the rest of the time there wasn't extremely pleasant for me, but by the end everything had become amazing, but I was too strong, so I decided to leave, so that they didn't become dependent on me to fix everything. She looked at the man she knew she loved and laughed at him, I can't believe you, the strongest person I've ever met is still the lowest ranking member of your country's military, you have to be kidding right? Embarrassed Naruto rubbed the back of his head while nervously laughing, sadly not, although I took the exam to be promoted twice I never was, the first time had the the village sacked, and the second time I wasn't promoted, because I used too much force against the other contestants. Anyway by the end of a long trying series of events I came out as one of the three strongest people alive, so it doesn't really matter, that's why I came here. I was looking for a challenge and the aforementioned desire for them to grow without me. Well, that sounds stupid. Irene commented on the excessive force bit, causing Naruto to laugh and kiss her, I know. I thought so too, this was the same pipsqueak that tried to fight a sand jonin once to boot. He was fair game. The introduction of the dragon slaying arts had been a turning point for the kingdom of Dragnif and the dragon festival, thanks to figures like Irene and Acnologia. However, conflict, as Naruto had experienced in his own world, only needs more conflict. Aside from the borderline warlike tension between the king and queen, leading to skirmishes within the borders of the kingdom, one of the best dragon slayers, Acnologia, driven and fueled by his hatred of all dragon kind, started killing even friendly dragons and dragon slayers alike, using his supernatural ability to consume the soul of his foes. Leading him to have gained power unlike that anyone in Dragnif had seen before, and causing Irene to have to make a decision which even hurt her. Acnologia had to go sitting far into the continent of Ishgur, far away from any human settlement. Naruto prepared himself for a fight to match Madara and Sasuke. He gathered as much chakra as he could, flaring it up for any magical being to feel, from the nearest settlement to those in the continent of Alvarez, a direct challenge to the rogue dragon slayer. Soon, his sensitive ears could pick up the flapping of giant wings in the sky, and he felt the sun become obscured. So, you've come. Naruto stated, standing in an unassuming position. Acnologia transformed himself back into his human form, standing face to face with the blonde, you and I both knew it was going to happen. You love your dragon too much. Irene is no dragon my friend. You, maybe. You've become the very thing you hated, you said you hated dragons because they cause pain. But what you're doing now what you plan to do, is no different. Naruto answered calmly. Crossing his arms, the dragon slayer sneered, spare me the lectures, Naruto. You know nothing. On the contrary, I understand what happens next, way more than you could possibly understand. The Jinchuriki responds, making the seal of confrontation, explaining, now, this is customary where I'm from when two friends fight, as a sign of respect. And now we fight. Clones sprouted from the ground, some melted into wood attempting to bind the monster before the blonde, and the others blew up, causing dust and smoke to kick up. DSCHK. He got away. Naruto told himself, ready up Kurama, this isn't your regular fight. Way ahead of you brat. 
the Nine Tails said as he sat in a meditative position gathering chakra for his host. Well, at least he hasn't transformed into a dragon yet. Naruto said out loud. You aren't worthy, the doctor called out arrogantly, I'll crush you. Don't be so certain, the blonde stated in turn, performing the hand seals tiger ram and snake, before clasping his hands into a prayer-like motion. Under the two of them a forest of trees grew from the rocky mountain terrain they currently stood on, both jumped away, Naruto to stand on a branch, and Acnologia trying to escape what would happen next. Naruto made the bird seal, and the part of the recently made forest Acnologia was trying to escape exploded, launching the dragon slayer into the sky. The man quickly transformed into his huge black and blue dragon. Naruto shrouded himself in the Kyuubi's chakra cloak, preparing himself for a long fight. The power of Kurama and I combined will never be defeated, Naruto said to no one in particular, but throw the wood style in the mix. Ox horse boar snake, after performing these seals Naruto found himself standing on top of a giant wood golem, staring straight into the eyes of the dragon in front of him. The creature opened its modifier at dragon roar, but Naruto was intimately familiar with that spell. And before Acnologia could fire the beam of energy at him, a clone appeared from nowhere from the clouds, with the Kyuubi's avatar surrounding him, and bit into the neck of the surprised dragon, sending both crashing back into the ground. Performing the dragon seal, multiple wood dragons emerged from the ground, one biting into the neck of the downed animal, and other restraining it. Looking at the person he considered to have been a friend with pity, Naruto spoke using words he detested. I'm sorry, but you are too powerful to let you roam. I must kill you. Sink with me Kurama. Naruto shouts, as he could feel a renewed stream of his precious life energy rushing through his pathways, an intoned wood-style secret technique. Through several thousand hands. The titanic wooden statue that dwarfed the size of the dragon by at least two times appeared under Naruto, lifting him hundreds or maybe even more than a thousand feet over his downed foe. I'm sorry. Naruto whispered one last time as his gaze hardened. He could see Acnologia beginning to truly strain his binding, but it was too late for the dragon. As thousands of fists descended upon the downed beast as Naruto threw the full might of the arcane statue with a yell of strain. The ground of the continent shook, explosions rose thousands of feet in the air. Irene could see the plume of smoke rise from her balcony. Naruto's eyes widened once the smoke cleared, as the statue fell into the flight trap he had summoned, he spotted the human body of his adversary still yet living, in a crater that would probably rival the valley of the end, but still living nevertheless. You survived. The blonde commented as the heavily injured doctor looked at Naruto with true fear in his eyes. That was impressive, I didn't know a person existed who could summon so much destructive power and remain standing on his feet. Another voice called from the top of the crater. Naruto turned to look at a figure who wore black and white robes, look at him with black eyes, you're the black mage Zeref. I've heard of you, in service of the king consort. And you are Naruto, the right hand of the queen. The teen said in a flat tone. Naruto, something's wrong with this one, Kurama pointed out from within the blind's mind. Naruto gave him a nod of acknowledgement, replying through their link, this is gonna be a fight damn it, just after I used such a taxing number of techniques. Let's hope he is as weak as he looks. What do you want? Naruto asked in a demanding tone, only to notice a shift of the teen's demeanor. Shit. The blonde cursed as he picked up Acnologia from the crater and jumped out of the way to avoid a beam of black magic. Damn, shadow clone technique. You too, keep that bastard distracted. What what are you doing? The blue-haired teen asked. Listen, I don't know what this Seraph guy wants, but it's obvious that there's gonna be a fight between him and I, and despite our earlier fight, if I'm going to die today, i rather you live to stop this person. I can sense something horribly off about them. Naruto admitted as he set down the Dragon Slayer a safe distance away. Just as Naruto was about to set off to stop this new opponent, but Acnologia stopped him, there was a sneer in his face, don't fail to kill him like you failed to kill me. Heh. I knew I liked you for a reason. Don't worry, I'm perfectly aware some people need a killing, and he's one of them. Naruto said with a confident smirk, and disappeared. Wood style. Tree bind flourishing burial. Naruto called out in hopes that Jutsu would be able to hold the dangerous mage known as Zeref. But much to his disappointment, the coffin exploded in shards of wood. But it served its purpose when Arasen Shuriken found its target. Yet much to his disappointment the most dangerous technique he had invented was dissolved by a black cloud. Damn, you fucking bastard. Why won't you die? Naruto yelled in frustration only ever felt when he fought Kagaya. No matter what he threw at the black mage, a black cloud would emerge from the team to dissolve it. I'm sorry, but for the good of humanity you must go. The mage spoke in a sorrowful tone. Oh fuck off you self-righteous bastard. The blonde yelled, only to have to dodge at the last second as a cow of all things wielding a warhammer, attempted to kill him. Zeref, he's near it. A female voice called. Naruto's red eyes quickly identified a blonde girl, about his own age. 
so you have a partner, well. I'm not going down without a fight. Truth be told he had been fighting for a whole day now, and the thousand hands technique had used up about half his chakra. He couldn't afford to spam more wood style jutsu, but he knew of a technique that would potentially end this. Wood style. Advent of a world of flowering trees. As soon as he performed the technique, hundreds of branches grew from the ground, and when they reached a certain height flowers bloomed, releasing a toxic pollen. As expected the black mist came from the black-haired teen to protect him, but that allowed Naruto to take the blonde girl as a hostage. Surrender or she dies. Naruto yelled, holding one of his few original kunais left to her neck, poised to end her life. The Balsi girl however shouted at the surprised Zeref, do it, don't hesitate. Surprised at the sudden turn, Naruto Spartan kicked the blonde, jumping away from another black beam of death, as he had come to call it, only to land and trigger the trap. Somehow, even the curse of the fight and the intensity of the jutsu he had been using, they had sequestered themselves into a newly made island. He had walked right into a trap and he felt incredibly foolish for that. But less than a quarter of his reserves and physically exhausted. He was almost willing to accept defeat. The two mages came up to him, the black-haired one claimed, it's for the good of Dragnif, your presence would have only brought more destruction and pain. I've seen more destruction and pain that you could possibly imagine Naruto sneered, but I didn't cower and try to hire others to do my dirty work, I faced gods and came out on top. One day or another, your dues will be served to you on a silver platter. And tell Rung, he won't get away with this. The barrier lit up in a gold light, and Anna and Zaref breathed a sigh of relief. It's over. It's finally over. Anna said allowing herself to breathe a sigh of relief, however, Zaref, he was for one reason shaken, he could feel that the blonde hadn't lied. To face a god and win, as soon as the thought sunk in, the mage regretted messing with a matter he didn't truly understand. Anna, we are screwed. It was two years after Naruto had been sealed and the kingdom of Dragnif had won the war. But with the way Acnologia slaughtered those in both sides it was closer to draw, an unforeseen consequence of dragon slayer magic was that it turned the users into dragons, and this process was happening to Irene. The king and Irene stood across the room from each other, with a plethora of guards standing by the king, all of whom were shaking in fear of the sight of the queen before them, who had half of her face covered in dragon scales that deathly pale. Rung shouted out, arrest the monster, throw her into a cell, not only is she an adulterer, but she's become one of the foul creatures she swore to kill. As the guards hesitantly approached her she spoke, you don't want to do this, I am still the queen here, you obey me, do not forget who the stronger person here is. We're sorry but you have been found guilty of committing adultery and treason, please come quietly. The guards responded to her. Please, don't do this rung, I'm pregnant. The queen begged, holding onto her belly. The man yelled, liar, there's no way you could be pregnant. The soldiers shifted around uncomfortably, it was one thing to betray the rightful queen, but it was another to attempt to hurt a pregnant monarch, add to the fact the only other man beside rung the queen had ever been seen, had disappeared well over years ago. The king had either gone mad, or Irene was lying. Either way, the queen was the most dangerous opponent in the room. Some soldiers even lost heart and began to slowly move backwards, abandoning the king then and there, this type of conflict wasn't worth it to them. The king, seeing as he was losing his leverage, drew his sword and tried to slash at Irene's stomach. Hoping to show that she was indeed not pregnant and it was just a desperate woman's gamble at trying to escape a life in the dungeons. I'll show you are a liar as you join your beloved foreigner in the afterlife. The word was tried as soon as Irene saw what was going to happen something broke within her. As her skin cracked and her body began its transformation. Irene screamed in rage and agony upon hearing his words. She didn't think Rung would have had the gall to talk about the dead man who she loved and respected more than any other living being. It opened a jagged wound which had refused to heal and expanded upon at the thought of losing her child. When her scream subsided, instead of a human, there stood a most magnificent dragon, with red scales covering its body along a wide underbelly and face, which was decorated with tattoos that covered her eyes like makeup, clearly denoting it a female. The king of Dragna stood in shock at what his most hated enemy had become and stood there helplessly as a dragon claw descended on him. Crushing him like the worm he was. Ink energy gathered around the dragon's maw and it released it at a group of fleeing guards who exploded into a pink mist and energy. Turning her head to the skies, the dragonified Irene let out a deafening roar as she took to the skies. The majestic creature went after every building and hurdle of humans in sight as the kingdom of Dragnif was destroyed by the might of the beast in one consuming ball of fire. When dawn came around, there were no dragons, but there also wasn't a kingdom left standing. Hundreds of miles away, a newly settled colony on this day would begin to build a grand temple that would worship what lay inside until it was forgotten. 400 years later. Lucy had just made it to the beach as she tried to run away from the crazy pink-haired lady who was screaming about love and the giant rock doll she had made to kill the blonde fairy. 
As she trapped Lucy she decided to end it, however just before she could a familiar red-haired woman showed up and delivered an ultimatum, leave now before I strike you down. Sherry, indignant, was about to refuse, but before could answer, the red-haired woman hit her with a devastating punch that knocked her out. Sighing in relief a bit away, Lucy paused for a moment before the red-haired in her vision finally sunk in, causing her to scream out Urza. What are you doing here? Lucy, Urza greeted in an icy tone, her face showing clear discontent and anger even at her guildmate, which was followed by the question, what made you and those fools think you had any right to an S-rank mission without being qualified or having the master's permission? Lucy looked away, nervous and ashamed of what had led to this. She responded in a weak and pleading tone, that was complemented by an assortment of crocodile tears and a hint of some very real fear, in the hopes that she would go unpunished, it's not like I knew we weren't allowed. Natsu just told me we had a mission, and by the time Grey caught up I couldn't do anything because Grey was knocked out too. The redeed in question answered, it matters not whether you knew or not all that matters is you broke the rules. Take me to where you had last seen Grey and Natsu. Deciding to do as she was told, and purposely ignoring the context of Urza's words, she took the redeed in the direction of the temple, retracing her steps to the cave with Deliora, hoping seeing what was inside would change the mage's mind. Or so it went in Lucy's head if she saw what was here she would have no choice but to let us stay and finish the quest. They made their way up into the temple, and when Lucy started to lead her to the cave system where Deliora was they fell down when a bunch of the floor's tiles collapsed, bringing them down an unknown distance, where they found a shrine to what must have been an ancient deity, as the room was covered in ornate decorations and had an absurd amount of what once must have been incense burned in honor of. The god when they prayed, the room itself appeared to be made of gold, and the inlays between the bricks had been filled with what looked to be either lacrima or precious jewels of some kind. Being the well-read individual she was Lucy commented, these are at least 300 years old, they come from the queendom that was here before it was Fiori, some kind of shrine from the looks of it. Urza looked at the blonde and asked, how do you know this stuff? Lucy responded, Levy really likes history, and when I asked her for a book to read she gave me one on the culture of this land before it became what it is today. Urza regarded Lucy for a brief moment before speaking, there appears to be some sort of spell here feeding off the Ethernano in the atmosphere, I cannot tell what it is because I am not very good sensing. We need to moff she was cut off by a flash of light and what looked like a barrier fizzling out of existence. Out of the newly destroyed barrier walked a tallish man with blonde hair with whisker-like marks on his cheeks, the very same marks Urza also had on her own cheeks. After stumbling out the man let out a hoarse whisper with a faint look of recognition Irene, as soon as the word left his mouth he passed out. Urza quickly moved to catch him, being the kind person she was, and as she laid his head on her lap, her hands began tracing his cheeks, or more specifically, the familiar pattern they held. Urza, is he your father? Lucy asked in confusion. However, the redeed was too distracted within herself, and with a trembling voice, she tried to convince herself it can't be it's not possible. Feeling confused and slightly angry at the thought she may have been abandoned and that she might not have had to go through the Tower of Heaven and lose all her friends to Jello's insanity, to avoid thinking of this, she threw the unconscious blonde over her shoulder and decided to re-quip her Heaven's Wheel armor for the ability to levitate that it grants her. Lucy we're leaving grab onto me. The redeed spoke as she turned to face the holder mage who grabbed onto her to escape the chamber they had fallen into. As they ascended Urza had a stoic expression on her face as they finally landed on the floor they had fallen through, Lucy deciding now was a good time spoke up, Urza we should head to the village where I last saw Natsu. Upset that Lucy took her to the temple rather than the village, the redeed questioned her, why would you not take me there then? Nervously Lucy held her hands up and spoke, well you asked me to take you to where I saw Grey and Natsu last so I did, it wasn't like I knew what would happen. The two wizards continued on their way to the village with the unconscious blonde man, it was two hours before they finally made their way to the makeshift huts the villagers were using, after their homes were destroyed by the jelly acid the giant rat dropped, in order to deal with any people who might try to interfere with the plan to kill Deliora. As they came to the villagers a called out, Natsu, Grey, where are you, come out now and spare yourselves the beating. When Natsu and Grey emerged she smacked them both upside the head. What do you fools think you're doing? Natsu you aren't cleared for this quest and Grey you were supposed to stop them from coming here, the master is furious at you four for this, Grey if you help me escort the others you won't be punished. Urza said to the ice make mage. Who objected? I can't do that. I have business here that I have to finish, nothing you say or do will stop me. Hearing this rebuttal the redeed in question re-equipped a plain steel sword and leveled it at Grey's chest. If you don't return I will have to force you, and failing that I will eliminate you. The raven-haired mage wasn't phased by her threats and walked as close as he could to the sword without cutting himself and answered her in a frigid tone, it doesn't matter I refuse to leave before dealing with Lion and Deliora. In answer to his she spoke, fine then. 
She re the sword into her hammer space and punched him in the stomach to knock him out so he would recover in peace. Boy. I'm not going back without Happy. Natsu yelled at the re indignantly before squinting his eyes, hey, what's that on your shoulder? He asked a woman he was deathly afraid of even if he would never admit it out loud. Why do you have someone on your shoulder? All of a sudden Natsu was mortified, did you kill that guy? That's shady even for you Urza. Cool. She yelled in response to the accusation before taking a minute to compose herself and then continued, why would I carry a dead man? No, I carried him here because I had questions for him about why he has the same marks on his face as I do. As she spoke the man in question started to stir, he spoke hey, I'm comfortable up here and everything, but think you could let me down. Naruto turned his head as much as he could before speaking again, and while I'm not getting shit on yet, you don't happen to have anything to eat, because looking around I think I was sealed away for a solid minute. Just after he finished Urza dumped him on the ground. He jumped to his feet, after that an energy bar smacked him in the face. Thanks the blonde spoke to the aggressive Reed who totally stole his look, I know Irene and I were popular, but to think we would have a fan go so far as to combine our looks never thought that would happen, but really you got her look down pat good job. He said to Urza not realizing every word just made her angrier and that the others who were there had all backed up. Looking ready to explode she smacked him and said, look I don't know who you or this Irene are, but I have questions for you, mostly about how we have the same marks on our face. Surprised the ninja asked, geez, you people don't even know who the queen is. How long was it sealed for? What year is it then? The group of people gathered stared at him as if he was crazy. Finished with his questions he looked around at the assembled group and saw two familiar faces, Natsu and Anna actually Lucy, and so he spoke again why Natsu where's your bastard brother, I want to smash him for sealing me away, and you Anna, Irene will have what's left of you for committing treason and siding with the king. But first I'm gonna kick your ass, hurry up, summon your spirits, so it won't just be me bullying a weak little girl. Natsu having heard about himself having a brother was confused but also pissed at this random guy for threatening Luigi, decided to speak up, hey. I don't care who you are if you continue to threaten Lucifer like that, then I'll kick your ass no matter what. And what do you mean my brother, I don't have a brother, only my dad Igniel, who has been missing for years. Wait. Igniel's missing. Since when? Naruto asked with a frown. That was concerning to him to learn that a dragon king had gone missing, especially with how weak his dragon slayer was, he doubted Natsu could even hurt a dragon, much less help with the war effort. What about the other dragons? Metalukana and Grandini and Wizloja and Skiadrum Hell, what happened to the other dragon slayers while we are at it? Wendy. The other children. Seriously, when is someone gonna tell me the year, it's really important. Natsu confused and more than a little upset answered with his own questions, it's 784x and Igniel took off on July 7 777x, but what do you mean the others, and you still didn't tell me about my brother? Answer me damn it. He shouted at the end of his sentence. Naruto frowned kid, you were left in Igniel's care in the year 3xxx. Just as the dragon civil war kicked off in Dragnif what happened to Dragnif? What happened to Irene? How could the inventor of dragon slayer magic just be forgotten? Urza stopped the too cold what nonsense are you talking about? That was over 400 years ago. Finally having regained some of her bearings, Lucy spoke up adding her own two cents, um Dragnif was destroyed over 400 years ago, Urza don't forget we found him in a shrine sealed away. Perplexed Urza responded, then why is he talking to Natsu like he knows him or talking about the dragons, if Igniel left in 777x? And we still don't know who Natsu's brother I interrupting her Naruto spoke up and answered her that's easy Natsu's brother is the world-renowned mage Zeref, even if I don't like him, I have to admit he was easily in the top 10 hardest fights I've had. Like how do you kill someone who's functionally immortal and causes death to every living thing around him geez what a, and he only beat me because of that blonde hag next to you over there. Seriously Anna watch it I'm coming for why being interrupted like he did Urza Lucy speaks up ah, my name isn't Anna it's Lucy, and the only magic I know outside of some small gimmick items is celestial spirit magic and it's been like 400 years, it's safe to say she's dead. Grinning the whiskered man responded well you look like her, so I'm gonna pick on you in mostly harmless ways. Unless your last name happens to be Hertfilia. Upon hearing her last name, Lucy squeaked in response to the thinly veiled threat. Urza, sick of listening, decided to speak the question on her mind. Are we related? We have the same marks on our face. Naruto, feeling bad for her decided to put her out of her misery and spoke, no it's impossible, I was the only one in my family to have those marks, given that they aren't genetic, as well as the fact that I am an only child and a war orphan from day of birth. Not to mention as embarrassing as it is when I was sealed away I was a virgin unless Irene molested me in my sleep, but that's unlikely to have happened. 
it was the day after Deloria, a demon of Zara freed by an edgy teenager named Lion, a sibling pupil of Grey, had been finally put down by the combined efforts of Grey, Natsu and Urza, and the five members of Fairy Tale Lucy and a curious blue flying cat named Happy, included along the journey back home. Also included in this list was the mysterious blonde stranger whose name they didn't yet know, but tagged along at the insistence of Natsu and Urza, though Urza's insistence was much more consistent with blackmail and threats. Naruto Uzumaki stood near the bow of the boat taking in the calm seas, leaning into the rails and using his hands to support his head. Upon further inspection it was obvious his eyes were glazed as he was oblivious to the world around him. We've been sealed away for over 400 years, the blonde Jinchuriki thought silently to his lifelong partner. The fox, Kurama listened intently and quietly as Naruto felt the sorrow at the thought of losing another loved one, this one cutting deeper than even the death of his master Jiraiya or his comrade-at-arms Nijihai Uga. Yet it was only the blink of an eye for me. Thus, the beast reminded the blonde. I rather like the redeed, willing to look and befriend beyond her own kind. Reminds me of a certain air had I know. Naruto chuckled at the fox's attempt to lift up his spirit. Giving his companion a light smile, the Jinchuriki thanked Kurama, before he frowned deeply, Urza is almost a perfect clone of Irene. But is as talented as her father was in swordsmanship. That's a serious assumption you're making there, Naruto. Kurama stated through narrowed eyes, Naruto frowned, the whiskers are no coincidence. Plus, the fact Natsu is somehow still here, it is a wild guess, but I'm certain of it. I'd bet my estate on it if I still had it. The ninja frowned a little further, in fact, do you remember when Irene took some of our chakra? The tailed beast remained silent afterwards. The time displaced ninja was called back to reality when Urza came up to him and stated, you never told us your name. Naruto, the blonde answered easily, Naruto Uzumaki. Warrior by nature, pacifist at heart. You are odd Naruto Uzumaki, the redeed teen stated as she looked at him with an odd look, to which said oddball replied with a toothy grin and a remark, pointing a thumb at himself, there's a reason in my time I was the number one unpredictable ninja. So, is there no way we could be related? Urza asked, still holding on to a dim glimmer of hope. Naruto turned to the sea, thinking of an answer, before a distant almost forgotten memory came back to him in full force. Urza saw him give the sea a ghost of a smile before he spoke. There was this old man in the village I was born in, long before I ever came to Dragnif, when I was just a fresh out of the academy. Urza listened with a frown on her face, so many things didn't make sense within that sentence, he looked not much older than her, and aside being sealed in stasis, there was no indication he was over the age of 20. Seeing that Naruto was waiting on her, she quickly apologized and listened to him antly, I remember like it was yesterday, the idea of another war spreading throughout the continent was terrifying after losing two Hokage and suffering through a ninja war and two direct attacks within the span of a decade. But amongst the chaos of reconstruction there was an old man, a carpenter, in search of two things, his grandson, and to have a treasure hunt with said grandson. We met on a random night while eating at a Raymond bar, he struck up a conversation and even offered to pay for my Raymond, and ever since he would be like a grandfather to me. But it didn't last, we were a ninja village, one of the five military powers of the continent, and his cover was off, he was a spy. The entire ninja force was mobilized from the greenest gen and like myself to the most cutthroat black ops we had. He was an enemy ninja, but not just any enemy ninja, he was of one of the village we last warred against, and their defeat came at the hands of my father, though I didn't know who he was then. My father was a very hated man outside our borders for his actions that brought us the very same victory. To make a long story short, turns out that while he had infiltrated the village to finish what he started in the war, our meeting gave him a change of hearts, and instead, he got his last wishes as a dying shinobi, he met his grandson, and had his last treasure hunt with him. Turns out I looked just like said grandson, but with whiskers. Laughs, the old man died with a smile, he found what he was looking for, and I found one of the many people I would come to call precious, despite the history of war between our nations. Just because we share a similar feature doesn't automatically mean we are related, but it doesn't stop us from finding family, I'm sure you know that well, Naruto's smile had widened as he reflected on the story he just told. Despite the morbid details of the story, Urza found herself smiling as well as she answered him, dear right. Thank you. It was a short few days later they arrived in Magnolia Town, Naruto had been in a bit of a shock, seeing how vastly different Fiori was from both Dragnif and the Hidden Leaf or any other place in the Elemental Nations for that matter. Yet upon arriving in the city Naruto lost his relaxed state upon feeling the tension in the air, he didn't need Kurama to feel it, and his companions must have felt the same as the walk was silent and awkward through the city, as they got pitying looks. Soon enough, the group of half a dozen reached a destroyed building, which caused his travel companions to gasp in shock. 
Upon seeing the destroyed building the guild members broke out into a sprint to find out what had happened to the building they had come to see as a second home, as they approached, their beloved bartender and former S-rank mage came to greet them, hey guys. The others are just in the basement. After the Blanchette finished speaking they followed her into the derelict guild hall and into the basement to meet with the master and the others. Once in the basement Natsu was the first to speak up, what the hell happened here? He shouted at assembled people and proceeded to go on a rant before Makarov smacked him and grumbled, shut up brat, you're loud. But Gramps. Natsu tried, hoping to reason with the old master. Though not entirely interested in a backyard brawl, Naruto was surprised to hear from the presumed owner of the guild, we won't be retaliating, the guild hall can be rebuilt, why bother with cowards who attacked during midnight when we weren't here, not to mention the treaty that forbids all guild wars. The old master took a swig from his canteen before he turned to the newcomer in the room, who are follow me. Wait, this conversation isn't over. Natsu yelled, before he was met with the slitted eyes of the stranger that claimed to know him. Yet the feeling was extremely familiar to him, as he heard Naruto speak Natsu. I know you were raised better than this, there's no point in fighting a useless conflict. Everyone in the room noticed immediately how deflated and subdued the Dragon Slayer became at the reprimand, especially Makarov, who filed the tidbit away about the man. After they reached the destroyed office where he wanted to talk to the blonde in question, so, are you here to join? The old man questioned. That's one of the reasons, the other is that I want to put Urza's mind at ease about us being related, I already told her that she can't be related to me, but I don't think she really believed me. The response threw the old man for a loop, because other than having whisker marks, they had nothing in common looks wise, and the boy looked to be younger than her, albeit not by much. Well we can help with that, we have something of a doctor for the guild, she can perform the necessary tests to find out whether you and Urza are related. The old man told Naruto. Sounds good, the sooner we sort this out the better, because I really, really hope Irene didn't molest me in my sleep actually that's just like her to do that the blonde responded while rubbing the back of his with a sweat drop. Makarov choked on his beer when he heard that last comment. As a side note, how do you know Natsu? He questioned. Naruto chuckled lightly before answering, I don't, I just know his brother and Igneal. Taken aback Makarov can't help but ask, Natsu has a brother. In response Naruto said, it's best if we leave it, I'm still very angry with his brother, so I'm going to be messing with Natsu for the foreseeable future, in hopes of getting him out of hiding. Laughing Makarov spoke up. That's fine as long as there's no permanent injury, anyway we should get going, follow me. It took Makarov, Naruto and Urza 45 minutes of walking to make it per Yusuke's cottage which was deep in forest, when the old man made it to the door he knocked, and what answered was an irate pink-haired lady whose first words were, why are you here, you know I hate humans, leave. We're actually here to get a paternity test done. Makarov responded. Hi, Urza, blondie get your asses over here, this will be quick, and I want you gone. The cranky old lady ordered. After the duo let her get blood samples, which she was way more forceful than required, they walked back over to the guild master. It took about five minutes for the test to finish, and when it did Puryusuka just looked confused about the results, finally speaking up she said, well, I've never met two people so unrelated yet so perfectly matched, you don't even share the same common ancestor that all people are supposed to share, how is that even possible? It doesn't matter, point is, despite being unrelated the structure of her DNA is almost identical to what it would be if she had been his child, the biggest similarity being the energy that was introduced to her pre-birth is near the same that floods his own magic. Well Irene did take a bunch of my magic at one point guess this is what she meant to do with it. The blonde mumbled. Urza, who looked sad at the lost chance of having had a family member questioned in a disappointed tone, so we truly aren't related then. Seeing the sadness in her eyes, which reminded him of the day Hiruzen coldly crushed the dream of finding his own family, Naruto told her, putting a warm harm on top of her head, sadly, no. There was no way we could have been related, my clan was wiped out, and the rest of my people followed after after millennia of self-destruction. I am quite literally the last of my kind. And trust me, when I first laid eyes on you I really wished you were my daughter, I love your mother more than I realized then, and trust me when I say, if she was still alive today. There would be nothing stopping us now from being a family. Naruto paused for a moment, taking a good look at her whiskers, and it finally clicked to him what Irene had intended to do, there's nothing that would stop me now from treating you like a daughter, if you accept me as a father. And Aiden. Sorry for the huge delay, I just completely lost interest in writing, mostly because of my current burnout on the source material of Naruto, just genuinely not being very good. As a side note please give Pell a huge thank you, if it wasn't for him I don't know when this update would come if at all, seriously he was a huge factor in motivating me. We are switching the schedule around a bit. 
it's gonna be two chapters per month, one on either the first of each month and the 15th or the 15th of each month, and then the 30th of the month, of there is a preference let us know in the reviews, and once more all criticism is good, seriously so sorry this happened, I can't promise we won't burn out, but chapters will be made for that eventuality. But the aforementioned done let's move on to the most common question, what's the pairing? We have finally decided definitively what it is, from this chapter one can guess many have figured it out though, but we aren't gonna say just yet for those who haven't. Also I said before but really thank Pell so much, this really wouldn't have gotten done without him messaging me about it so much, so this chapter is for sure his baby, he's been waiting on it for ages. It had been three hours since Naruto and Urza had been tested to check if they were related, and the redeed was conflicted about what to do about it, it was shocking to hear from someone younger than her that he had been in friendly enough with her mother to the point of wanting to be her father, and if the whiskers she had were anything to go by, it was probably more on her mother's side as well. She had so many questions, but no idea where to start, to her the biggest thing she had questions about was how her mother had been alive 400 years ago, but she herself had only been born 19 years ago, the next one was about that blonde Naruto, who claimed to have been close to her mother, to the point of volunteering to be her father. And his claims must have some truth to them if what the guild's unofficial doctor said was true about their genetic structure, then he was probably closer than he had let on. Within the woods surrounding Magnolia Town, Naruto had built up his own cabin using the wood style. He chose to temporarily settle outside the city bounds, having taken the possibility of an attack by the troublesome guild known as Phantom Lord into consideration. He stared at it, having just finished some business, read grocery shopping, for the night in the town. As he approached his temporary lodging he sensed a source he was all too familiar with, he sped up a bit in order to get home and see what his one-time friend wanted from him. Opening the door he spoke, Oi, bastard what do you want here? We weren't exactly friends last time we talked. Although still somewhat upset over Acnologia single-handedly fucking up the war effort, he was somewhat excited to see the man again. Unfortunately once the Dragonslayer spoke he knew it wasn't a social call. That asshole Zeref is still around and this time he has a whole continent as well as that redared bitch you kept around. Just thought you should know. Despite what happened, we still have a bigger common enemy to defeat after that, things get difficult. What is it with people being alive longer than they should? Was the fountain of youth found? Was immortality just given out like candy? This is bullshit. The blonde exclaimed at the discovery that Zeref and Irene were still alive after 400 years. Naruto spoke up again, that's beside the point, what do you mean about Zeref having a continent? And Irene siding with him. What's with that shit? Acnologia scoffed at his self-proclaimed rival. Well Zeref has been busy, he's been looking for a way to die after being cursed by Anxorim, so he made demon after demon to do the job, but all failed. And somehow he ended up with a continent. The blonde said exasperated. And Irene that explains Urza but how she must know she wouldn't. Would she? This time, he was speaking low to himself, pacing around the room. Tuckling lowly to himself Acnologia stood up and spoke, that sounds like an issue for you not me, can I get a cup of water before I leav? Ashura here bought some bottle due to the current state of this cabin, Naruto motioned to the lack of furniture and likely usable utilities. As the rogue dragon slayer began to make his way out of the cabin, he spoke one last time, don't expect me to spare the queen if she crosses my path. If what you said it's true Naruto paused, his heart wrenching at the fact he ever had to piece the following words together, she's an enemy and must be killed. Acnologia paused for a moment, turning his head to the side enough to give Naruto a side glance. The man turned dragon would swear up and down for the rest of his life it never happened, but his lips quirked upwards momentarily, and he nodded in approval, perhaps you aren't a useless ally after all. The long silence followed as the blonde digested all the information he had been given. Somehow, Zeref, Irene, Acnologia, and Natsu have all survived to this point in time to the point I finally re-emerged from my seal. Why now? How? And why the specific group tied to the birth of dragon slayer magic? Nothing is adding up. Next day. He was cooking when he first felt it, the trembling of the ground. The small vibrations that gradually grew louder and louder, then there was the build-up of energy even he could feel, coming from the direction of the guild in which the child of his missing lover was a member of. Without thinking, he flew out of the cabin. His six-path sage moat allowed him to move with a speed that matched his desperation as an amenity crossed the depths of the forest and across Magnolia. Floating just above the guild hall, he watched as a giant castle with legs began to fire what he identified to be an energy weapon. And to top it all off, Urza Scarlet, daughter to his forbidden love, Irene, was just about to sacrifice herself to stop the weapon with some sort of magical armor. Without thinking, he performed the hand seals required for the summoning technique. Intoning in a low voice, summoning Jutsu. Quintuple Rashomon. 
having leaped in front of Urza prior to activating the jutsu, five demonic-looking faces on top of their frames descended just in time to helpfully stop the attack. Off switch, Urza. Summoning. Quintuple Rashomon. Urza opened her eyes to the sound of five heavy gates slamming against the ground, just as she prepared to sacrifice herself for her guildmates. The Jupiter cannon struck the first of the five gates and promptly broke through it, then a second and a third. Mortified, the redeed watched a look of strain on the blonde's face. The horror and fascination with the strange man that claimed to have been close with her mother stopped the blast of the cannon with the fourth of the five gates. When the laser finally fizzled out, the blonde let off a sigh of relief. Causing the requip mage to ask, why? Why did you? She was interrupted when his arm pulled her into him as he hugged her, explaining, I already lost your mother, I'm not losing the last thing she left in this world. Stunned by words she never thought she would hear she hugged him back and said, thank you father. Hearing those words from the last remnants of the first person he truly loved his only response was, irk. It was as if he was physically struck and in that moment he felt more happiness than ever before. Naruto looked in disgust at what remained of Porla, the leader of a guild called Phantom Lord, and the person who put the life of his lover of yore. The mage was utterly weak and was defeated with a Rasengan, who knew humans were so fragile. Naruto scoffed, Ruffian doesn't even crack my top 1000 fights. Who are you? Another voice called out from the end of the hallway. A familiar figure stood blocking his exit way. Ah, Metalikana's son Galilor was at Jassiel. The blonde asked himself, getting an odd look from the Iron Dragon Slayer. It's Gajil Red Fox. The black-haired teen yelled with a tick in his eyebrow as he charged at the blonde, throwing punch after punch however, the blonde opponent simply backstepped away from every single taunting him, what would the great iron dragon say about you? Playing with the villains, an incompetent one at that, such a disappointment. Agil growled, yelling, shut up. What do you know about Metalikana anyways? Beat me and find out. Naruto answers with a grin, a chance to see how one of the five turned out. Though, so far, he was being left sorely disappointed. They wouldn't be strong enough to face the challenge set up for them, killing dragons, you are weak Giselle. An academy student could do better than this. The blonde hopped away from the floor, rocketing towards a wall, bouncing off towards the roof before coming back down, delivering a kick that barely missed the intended target but broke through the floor, causing the two to fall down. Naruto landing crouching, his grin widened as he quickly straightened out, backhanding his opponent into a wall, come on hard ass, I'm pulling my punches back. Is this the best that you can offer me? Red Fox. Shut up. The 18-year-old yelled, however, he stopped for a second, getting a slight grin. There was iron around him to consume. All the iron he could as Naruto watched finding some amusement, go on, eat all the iron you can. Not like it's going to help you anyway. The iron dragon slayer had a sinister green as his skin turned gray, I got you now old man. The blonde sighs in disappointment, it seems you can't even go dragon force. Agil stopped for a second, dragon what? Never mind, weren't you trying to do something? The blonde asked dismissively. No no no, dragon what? It's useless to worry about things you will never have. Karama's Yanchuriki answered once more, his dismissive tone infuriating the teen. Agil activated his iron dragon scales, which covered mostly just his upper body, face, and arms. Like this you bastard. With this I literally become unstoppable, doubling both in offense and defense, the black-haired teen boasted charging at his opponent anew. Two multiplied by zero is still zero you know. Naruto answered humorously, jumping out of the way of his former charge's lounge. Frustrated that his opponent kept dodging his attacks, Gajil yelled out, ah, shut up, shut up. And stay still you bastard. Gladly, the blonde answered, planting both feet on the ground, this reminds me of my days with Team 7, when I was just a lowly soldier fresh out of the academy. I hadn't even earned the right to call myself a ninja yet. The black-haired dragon slayer threw a punch at his face, which he blocked with his left, throwing back a solid right hook at the enraged phantom, sending him back a few feet. But Metalikana's dragon slayer was tenacious as he stood up and charged at him again, left hook, Naruto simply ducked under it and used his right hand to block the kick that followed, grabbing the teen by the leg and planting his face on the floor, I remember how Kakashi-sensei manhandled me that day. Iron Dragon Roar. Sidestepping the obvious attack, he continued, on a mission, I met a curious boy, he was in a way just like me. All alone in the world until we found someone who saw our worth, he told me one can only be truly strong when they have something to protect ever since then, every fight I got into, every battle, I've always went into it with something to protect. Shut up. I will kill you. Gajil screamed, extending his arm out, iron dragon sword. The teen transformed his arm into a large jagged blade, spikes along the edge spinning like a chainsaw, ready to cut its opponent to pieces. Die. Naruto simply stood stock still, breathing a disappointed sigh with his arms at his hips, even as he could hear members of Fairy Tail scream his name out. 
No. Naruto. Move. The sound of metal hitting metal as Gajul's blade simply stopped against his skin, as if it was titanium, shocking the dragon slayer and the witnesses. Naruto simply grabbed hold of the edge of the blade, his hands growing into nails, eyes turning slitted red, this time is no different. Bajil trembled as he found himself within a sewer-like environment, Naruto standing tall above him, a growl coming from behind the man, as the blonde spoke, calm down, Kurama. Behind him, a gigantic reddish-orange fox with nine even bigger tails that cut into the iron sword, easily over a thousand feet, growled at him like a dog ready to attack its victim. Bajil fell back on his butt, face wide in shock as he struggled to breath, sweat pouring down his face as he asked himself, who was this monster? Do you see now, Gajil? What if Naruto has all Uzumaki Chakra and Rinnegan in Fairy Tale, and thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.